Hi, I'm Bob Hockmuth, County Agent with the University of Florida IFAS Extension. We're here at the Suwannee Valley Agricultural Extension Center near Live Oak. In this module, we're going to look at an innovative strategy known as trap cropping, where we can plant certain types of plants and attract insect pests away from our cash crop on the farm. Well, Russ, we got uh, a really innovative use for sunflower here that most people probably would not recognize. What are, what are, we, what are, we, what are you using the sunflower for? That's right, Bob. The, the sunflower here we're using for, as a trap crop to uh, attract some pest. This is Russ Mizell, professor of entomology with the University of Florida. So in the trap cropping system that you have here, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the principles that you're following to put this, uh, put this strategy together. Well, one of the things uh, we wanted was to have something that uh, would be useful around the year uh, and for, each, for any kind of cropping season and plants that were available, uh, cheap, uh, could get seeds with, and that worked. Uh, particularly targeting stink bugs because stink bugs are uh, a really ubiquitous pest and there are very few insecticides and other methods to control them. I've noticed over the years that as we've gotten away from some of the real broad spectrum pesticides and using a little more soft types of pesticides around that stink bug is definitely one of those insect groups that have uh, sort of built in populations. I see a lot more stink bugs now than I used to. So in using a trap cropping system like this where you've got sunflowers planted, uh, they get up to a certain stage and from what you're describing there, the stink bugs just can't stay away, can they? That's they right. They're looking, they're looking for, they feed on lots of different host plants and they move from plant to plant and what they're looking for here is a thing, usually a plant that's in the dough stage or the milk stage, usually a seed that's developing, but they do feed on other parts of the plant. But <clears throat> the, the plants that we have involved in this, sunflower is a well-known plant, has a lot of different functions, attracts beneficials as well. Um, we have uh, things like uh, buckwheat, we have millet, sorghum, all those are crops that are available, widely available, but work in this, for this particular function uh, to uh, take the place of insecticides. So all of those crops, sunflower and buckwheat, and we've also been using some triticale, sorghum, all of those are super attracting uh, to the stink bugs. And I know that the stink bugs are going to move into a field. I see that you've got this planted on the border of the field. So uh, I'm sure that there's some strategy there in terms of where you're going to want to plant these uh, kinds of trap crops. Tell us a little bit about where the stink bugs come from and how we can utilize the place where we plant them to their benefit. Yes, not only is the timing important, but the placement is, is just as important. The insects are moving through the landscape and they don't just fly everywhere, they follow the vegetation, so you have to intercept them. Uh, and so that means that you're, you want to put them on the border rows and you want to line them up someplace where you think they're coming from. Like in this field, uh, on our right here, it's pretty wide open, but on our left behind, uh, in front of us here, there's uh, actually some other vegetation. So one would guess that they would come out of that vegetation and come to here, and we have a barrier on that side as well. So time and space are two of the components that you really have to think about in order to get this to work. So we're here now in May and these sunflowers are getting up to the stage where they're going to be really effective uh, for us here as the stink bugs continue to move across. But back a month ago when the stink bugs were first emerging out of the wooded areas and other vegetation, um, we did not have the sunflowers up big enough at that point to be attractive. So at that point we were using more like triticale and other kinds of small grains when they reached that dough stage and boy did we collect them back about yeah. a month ago when that first population moved in yep. and it was the same thing you had a perimeter around the field they moved in we can catch them there and once we get them trapped in a location like this for sunflower this is not a crop that we're looking to grow so we can not only trap them but we can clean up the population exactly. there. So you've got them in a small space as opposed to have them in all over your entire cash crop and the other point that you made is a very important one one of the things we had a problem with was was uh, 
uh, cold soil, or in other words, winter, early spring, late fall. Uh, a lot of these plants are warm weather plants, and so we had to look for something else that would perform the same role, and that is attract the stink bugs and be able to grow in that particular part of the year. And triticale is an excellent, uh, if, if you know your grains, you know that that's a, that's a uh, winter grain is planted in the fall, and the way we arrived at uh, solving the problem of cold soil was to plant several times in the fall, and then in the spring, regardless of what the weather is, which is highly unpredictable, one of those plantings would turn out to be in the proper stage, which we were talking about, uh, either a, you know, uh, uh, the soft uh, dough stage or a milk stage and would serve as your trap crop. So we solved the cold weather problem using triticale. Yep. Excellent. So depending on the season, you're going to recommend different kinds of crops, maybe triticale for the early, yep. early spring. Sunflower could be replanted many times it during the be. summer and so we can use sunflower for a long period of time. And I know some other crops like sorghum and millet yep. uh, that you have had great success with also through the, through the summer period. So it's important to know what crops are going to do well at that particular time of the year and the stink bugs just cannot stay away from sunflower or triticale in the milk stage or the dough stage so so we can we can trap them in here. Well one uh, good good point to make about uh, uh, what you're saying is that the, the buckwheat only takes about five weeks from planting to get into flower and, and to be attractive to them. It has a, a lot of other benefit too. It actually attracts the parasites of the stink bugs, so you're bringing the the uh, wasp and the and the or the flies and the wasp and the and the um, stink bugs together. And the other thing about the sorghum and millet is, like for example, in organic growers, they're going to have a certified area and they're going to be planting in the same place all the time. So they probably have more permanent beds. So we've always got a source of very attractive food for the for the stink bugs and and in the case of the sunflowers this one would primarily be yep. used for a trap crop but the buckwheat has um, multiple purposes and and I have loved the buckwheat in terms of the purposes that it has served here and it brings in an incredible amount of beneficial insects parasitic wasps big-eyed bugs yep. lady beetles it's just incredible and it has lots and lots and lots of blooms and it blooms for a pretty long period of time. So we, we've used that uh, in uh, plantings within our vegetable crops to encourage a buildup of the beneficials within the cropping system. And that so. was one of the features that, that we wanted in choosing uh, and t testing and selecting all of the uh, trap crop plant species that we're recommending. The sunflower is a well-known plant, just like buckwheat is. Uh, with those multifunction. It has pollen, so it attracts a lot of pollinators. One of the things that most people might not think is an advantage, but uh, uh, sunflower, for example, gets other insects on it. And you, if you're going to attract beneficial insects like uh, lady beetles and big-eyed bugs and that thing, then you have to have something for them to feed on. And some of these plants like the buckwheat will have nectar, whereas this will have pollen, it'll have alternative host. It'll have white flies, it'll have mites, it'll have aphids on it. And usually they won't move over into your cash crop because, but they will attract the beneficials. So that's a very important, uh, um, we call that multifunction, if you, if you will, because they're performing, not only are they serving as a trap crop, but they're enhancing the general um, suppressive part of your of your landscape and suppressing pest in general. And I see that you've brought along a couple of your yellow containers and things to try to help encourage some of the populations to move into an area. Maybe describe those uh, a little bit. I have uh, brought uh, two examples here. We, we did a test a couple of years ago where, where we were trying to uh, concentrate lady beetles in a, say for example, person's yard or for an organic grower, like say your rose bush had aphids on it, could we actually increase the biological control in that place? <clears throat> and visual cues are well known to be, uh, we use those uh, to monitor insects, so we tested a whole bunch of different configurations of what you see here, and these turned out to be equivalent and also uh, the most attractive. These actually attract stink bugs, so uh, it has the uh, carryover of if you are a small grower, 
then you can grow these plants in containers. And actually, uh, early in the season, if you can't grow them outside, it's too cold or something like that, you can actually start your plants in the greenhouse, then move them up to big containers and have them ready to be in, you know, uh, what you want to do is you want to bracket your crop with respect to trap crops so that you're, you're out there and you have your trap crop ready to be more attractive than the cash crop is all through your growing to make it most effective. So these are, again, these are multifunctional. They're attracting beneficials, but they're also attracting the stink bugs if you put them in your containers. So either one, this is just an old, I think this is a, like a five or seven gallon plant pot. And this is just a three inch mailing tube painted bright yellow. So, and believe it or not, this will increase your lady beetles in one spot by about two to five times. So they just attract those. It just increases the, uh, the visual distance that they can see it from Good. and they'll respond to it. So that makes the whole system work a little bit yep. more effective. So you've got a couple of different things going on here. We're increasing the beneficial population with the buckwheat. We're attracting in a number of different species of stink bugs here in the sunflower. And ultimately with the purpose of trying to keep them out of our cash crop, in this case squashes and watermelon and cantaloupes that are planted behind us, we can um, perhaps prevent uh, the ability of those stink bugs to ever make it into the crop, reduce exactly. their pesticide use, and, and have a very friendly uh, strategy here to, to accomplish that. So Russ, yep. thanks very much. This has been a very important component of our overall uh, whole farm approach to integrated pest management. Well, so this, thanks is for a, your expertise. this is a very good tool. It, it works. <laughs> That's what we need. <laughs>